It's been a week since International Women's Day was marked by massive demonstrations across the globe, but the American March in New York has now been stained with accusations of anti-Semitism after organizers neglected to invite any Jewish representatives to speak and voice support for the known anti-Semite and Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farkan. Joining us now is Emily Schrader, the digital director at Stand With Us, to give us her insight on why this happened. All right, so you just wrote an op-ed for the Jerusalem Post claiming that feminism is being hijacked. Can you explain why you say that? Right, so uh, this has been an issue of mine for a while. Uh, I was upset, frankly, about how uh, the Women's March sort of used uh, the campaign and the important cause of feminism uh, to achieve their own agendas years ago. However, now it's really come to light because of Tamika Mallory, one of the co-chair, uh, co-chairs, and her um, her involvement or attendance in Louis Farrakhan's speech. However, she's not the only one. Uh, Carmen Perez, also another co-chair, she also defended him by stating that you know uh, there are no perfect leaders, which isn't really a justification. I mean, we're talking about someone Farrakhan who who said that Hitler was a very good man. Uh, who said that the Jews are his worst enemy and, and Jews are responsible for 9-11. So there's been a consistent pattern um, of association with people who are explicitly anti-Semitic. Um, and also there's been an ongoing trend over the last few years of, uh, of um, refusing to condemn anti-Semitism and, and pushing the Palestinian cause as an issue of women's rights. Well, well, here's why would the march intentionally exclude Jewish groups and speakers? What is the point of doing that? Um, I mean, I don't know. That's a question for them. I don't know why they would explicitly exclude them. What they actually did with the initial platform was they said that, you know, they listed a whole litany of, of causes of, of groups who are underrepresented or discriminated against, um, but didn't mention Jews at all. Um, so it wasn't as much saying that Jews aren't, aren't, uh, aren't welcome. It was saying that that's not a cause or a group that's discriminated against, which unfortunately, as we know, just isn't the case. Right, yeah, okay. So, I mean, what can be done to correct this issue is, uh, in your mind, what are the steps that need to be taken right now? I mean, I think first and foremost, all of them need to universally condemn anti-Semitism and come out with a very strong statement. And what they've done isn't that. They've been, they've been pushed by other people because of everything that's happened uh, to condemn it. And they've sort of tiptoed around it, Linda Sarsour and Carmen Perez and Tamika Mallory. It, Tamika Mallory's initial response was tweeting something that almost didn't make sense about how, you know, if you're not persecuted by those who persecuted Jesus, uh, then you're not doing the right thing, which, of course, is an anti-Semitic stereotype in and of itself. Right. Um, so they need to universally condemn this. And I think that other women like myself, other Israeli women too, um, and Zionists who they've explicitly come out against in the past, need to speak out and say this is unacceptable. Feminism is too important of a cause to be hijacked by people who, who can't, say, can't stand up to anti-Semitism. All, right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Thank Emily. Thank you. All right. The Israel